53 are now reported dead from the wildfires on the Hawaiian island of Maui. The governor is now urging Hawaiians to take in residents who have lost their homes. And this will be the new cause of homelessness that we'll be talking about as climate catastrophe gets worse. I'll address this on tomorrow's program. There needs to be a census of homeless people who... Oh, I have to hang on. Hang on, I'm having a technical. Uh, let me uh, let me give you. Let me. I'll be right back. We have uh, a slight emergency. Hang on, stick with me. It's going to be one of those days, huh? All right. Sorry about that. Hi. People have... Uh, sorry about that. Uh, there needs to be a serious uh, census of homeless people who have lost a place to live due to climate change-related disaster. Yes, homelessness is caused by skyrocketing housing prices, but climate catastrophe also plays a major role in homelessness. And again, tomorrow I will talk about why we need to study the correlation between homelessness and climate catastrophe as we see playing out in Hawaii this morning. The governor of Hawaii described certain parts of the island as looking as though a bomb went off. There are reports that residents were misinformed, told the fire had been 100% contained and weren't told to evacuate until they were already running for their lives. The mayor of Maui, during a press conference yesterday, refused to answer any questions as to why residents of Maui received no alerts to evacuate. And so the news media will have somebody to blame instead of the people who set these fires, the CEOs of ExxonMobil, Chevron and Shell. Instead, all the focus for the next month will be about how the government failed the people of Maui. Watch. There will be little to no coverage of who actually set this fire, and that would be anyone who owns stock in fossil fuels. Meanwhile, Joe Manchin says he's seriously thinking of quitting the Democratic Party because the leftists inside the party have created a toxic atmosphere a toxic atmosphere. The, the man who takes more donations from fossil fuels, fossil fuel companies, more than any other politician in Washington, Joe Manchin says it's the left that is creating a toxic atmosphere in Washington, D.C. Have you looked out your window? Have you opened the window in Washington, D.C., you prick? Take a deep breath, Joe Manchin. Political discourse on the left isn't responsible for the toxic atmosphere in Washington. It's the fossil fuel companies lining your pocket, you criminal prick. Joe Manchin, Michael Cohn, Donald Trump's former attorney, says he's thinking of making a run for Congress. He should go F himself. And special prosecutor Jack Smith has indicated he'd like Donald Trump's trial for election interference to start sometime in early January of 2024. ProPublica reports this morning that Clarence Thomas has been treated to at least 737 luxury vacations that were paid for by millionaires and billionaires since he became a United States Supreme Court justice. In the article, ProPublica writes that this is an undercount, that 737 luxury vacations is an under undercount. They write, quote, we've been able to count at least 38 destination vacations, including a previously unreported voyage on a yacht around the Bahamas, 26 private jet flights, plus an additional eight by helicopter, a dozen VIP passes to professional and college sporting events, 
where he was typically perched in the skybox, two stays at luxury resorts in Florida and Jamaica, and one standing invitation to an Uber exclusive golf club overlooking the Atlantic coast. That's ProPublica. Go uh, read the article over at ProPublica and support great journalism. Well, we're back on the indictment watch, and this time a new tranche of indictments is expected to be handed down by a Georgia grand jury convened by Fulton County, Georgia's district attorney, Fawny Willis. Now, here's why these indictments, uh, more than special counsel Jack Smith's two sets of criminal indictments, uh, here's why these indictments could end up being more important if the unthinkable happens and Donald Trump gets elected in 2024. Now, we know that once Trump becomes president, God forbid, he turns the Justice Department into his own law firm. He pardons himself and then we don't even know if that's legal, but who cares? He'll do it anyway. And then he goes ahead and prosecutes his political opponents. He's already said that he's going to do that. But these indictments that should be coming down in about two weeks, these indictments come to us from Georgia. And the Atlanta Journal-Constitution points out this morning that a presidential pardon does not apply to criminal trials that take place in the states. This is going to be a tough one for Republicans. They're big believers in states' rights. Well, a presidential pardon is only for federal crimes, not state crimes or civil suits, by the way. A president cannot pardon anyone for a civil suit. So the Eugene Carroll $5 million defamation suit will still stand. Presidential pardons do not affect civil lawsuits. In order for Donald Trump to be pardoned for any criminal conviction in the state of Georgia, he would have to go before a pardon board that makes it impossible to keep a convicted criminal from serving at least a part of their sentence. First off, in Georgia, according to the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, Trump would have to serve five years in prison before he could even start the process to request a pardon. I'll take five years of him in prison. Uh, yes, the, the governor of Georgia is a Republican. His name is Brian Kemp, not Stacey Abrams. But the governor has no say in the pardon process. Pardons are granted in Georgia by independent boards separate from the governor. And Brian Kemp, while a horrible Republican who stole his first gubernatorial race from Democrat Stacey Abrams back in 2018. He stole that election by scrubbing at least 50,000 African-Americans from the Georgia voter rolls. And Stacey Abrams conceded, but not really. She said this election was stolen through voter suppression. They scrubbed black people from the voter rolls and made it impossible. Uh, the lines for in black neighborhoods in Georgia were hours, took hours for African-Americans to vote in Georgia when uh, Republican Brian Kemp stole the uh, gubernatorial race back in 2018 from the African-American Stacey Ab Abrams. Uh but in defense of Republican pig Brian Kemp, and he is a pig, he did refuse to cooperate with Donald Trump and Mark Meadows when they try to steal the election in Georgia back in 2020. So this is an important trial that's going to take place down in Georgia. Uh, Trump cannot pardon his way out of this one. There's really no certainty, actually, as to whether or not a president can pardon himself at all for federal crimes. Nobody knows. But you can be certain that Trump's attorney general will order the Office of Legal Counsel to write a memo saying that the president can pardon himself the same way the Office of Legal Counsel within the Justice Department wrote a memo back, I think it was in 1975, saying it's the Justice Department's official policy not to indict a sitting president. These aren't laws. This is just policy. It's 
the Office of Legal Counsel inside the Justice Department writing a memo saying we don't prosecute sitting presidents. There's no law on the books. Ralph Nader talks about this on the radio show. There, there are no laws on the books saying the Justice Department can't indict a sitting president. So these aren't laws when it comes to indicting presidents. These are policies. But I'm, I'm sure there's a constitutional scholar watching right now who's infuriated, saying this isn't how it works. Uh, the, the Justice Department's office doesn't control the, the pardon process. You don't know what you're talking about, that there can't be a memo from the Office of Legal Counsel inside the Justice Department that uh, changes the policy on whether or not a president can pardon himself. Well, if Trump becomes president, the Justice Department will write that memo and there'll be enough sycophants who will go along with it. So the Georgia indictments uh, coming down in two weeks will serve as a surrogate election interference criminal trial should Trump figure out a way to short circuit special counsel Jack Smith's federal election interference criminal trial. So much of the federal indictment that was handed down last week. So much of Jack Smith's indictment was based on what Donald Trump did in and to Georgia. Different statutes were broken, but uh, many of the federal crimes Smith is prosecuting Trump for took place in Georgia, more so than in any of the other seven battleground states won by Biden that Trump actively tried to switch. The, uh, the state attorney general in Michigan has already begun prosecuting the phony elector scheme. The state attorney generals in Arizona, New Mexico and Arizona are, are looking into the phony elector scheme. But Georgia is where Trump was caught red handed. The infamous January 2nd, 2021 call to Georgia's Secretary of State, Brad Raffensperger, Sperger, I mispronounce his name. I think it's Raffensperger. Oh, that's the, that is where Trump was heard on tape intimidating and then demanding that, that they find votes so that Georgia is moved from Biden into the Trump column. Uh, God, it's hot in here. So that tape, and I, I went over it on yesterday's show. I really urge you to go back and listen because I really outlined how this was uh, defrauding a state government. Uh, that, tape, that tape became public before January 6th. And then January 6th happened where once again, Trump was caught red handed on tape. That call, that audio tape is worth listening to. Listen to yesterday's show. I play parts of it. And it's incontrovertible evidence that Donald Trump is a racketeer. So the Fulton County District Attorney, Phony Willis, she can't prosecute Trump for what happened on January 6th, but she can prosecute him for everything he did in the lead up to January 6th. The lies, the intimidation, the coercion. There are reports that she is going to prosecute Donald Trump under George's RICO statutes charging Trump with racketeering, because when you listen to the phone call, that's exactly what's going on. Racketeering. Go back and listen to my show yesterday. Trump is a gangster, so much so that Fawny Willis has sent out emails urging her staff to be careful, to watch themselves, that it's no longer safe for them. Trump is out of options. He is out of options, just like he was out of options on January 6th. So he turns to violence. He was out of options on January 6th. Mike Pence said no. He lost 61 cases in the courts. Cha you know, challenging the elections, claiming voter fraud. He lost 61 cases when he got up on the ellipse that morning on January 6th. He was all out of options. So what do fascists do? 
they turn to violence. Okay, here is Donald Trump Wednesday on Newsmax threatening Fawny Willis like the gangster he is. Can she give you a fair shake? No, of course not. Look, I don't think the people of Georgia, where I did very well, and I won it the first time, and I won it, I think, by much more the second time. I can say that about the whole election, too. I don't think they'd stand for it. They won't stand for it. He's uh, talking to Eric Bowling. More about Eric Bowling in a moment. They are setting up barricades outside the, the terrible, Georgia. Terrible, they're, terrible, terrible. They're in preparation, obviously, I would assume, for an indictment. Terrible, terrible. That's uh, terrible that they're setting up barricades in anticipation of uh, the indictment down in Georgia. The barricades are terrible, terrible. Uh, not the fear that Trump's people will storm the courthouse. The, the barricades are terrible, terrible. His supporters are out of shape and it's, you know, they're going to have to climb over the barricades. And that's terrible, terrible, terrible. So this is Eric Bolin. He hosts a show on Newsmax and he's a huge Trump supporter, so much so he was on Trump's shortlist to be Secretary of Commerce back in 2017. Donald Trump's first year in office, 2017. Bowling considers himself a hard right conservative. Emphasis on the word hard, very hard, especially around the office when he had a show on Fox News. Back in 2017, the Huffington Huffington Post reported that several women over at Fox News complained that he had sent them unsolicited, unsolicited Dick pics. Okay, this was right after Roger Ailes and Bill O'Reilly were thrown out. This was back in 2017. And this was right after Bill O'Reilly and Roger Ailes were fired after Fox was revealed to have spent close to one hundred million dollars, maybe more, settling sexual harassment and sexual assault charges filed against those two Casanovas. At the height of the Me Too movement, this was 2017, Donald Trump's first year in office, Fox News, in response to this article in the Huffington Post, uh, announced that they were suspending Eric Bowling pending an investigation because right after the announcement was made, more women stepped forward. It just wasn't two employees. And... uh, Eric Bowling had no choice but to file a $50 million defamation suit immediately against the reporter for the Huffington Post. His name would be Yasher Ali Hadiyat. Not against the Huffington Post, but the lowly reporter who wrote the story. Right? You know, this is what right wing bullies do to to chill freedom of the press you, you sue the reporter for $50 million, which you know he has. So here is the complaint. And uh, it's kind of interesting. This, is, uh, this was the complaint that Eric Bowling filed against uh, the reporter, Yasher Ali Hadiyat. And uh, it was filed immediately. And then within a month, this is from uh, USA Today, uh, Eric Bowling was fired. This is from USA Today, uh, 2017 in September. Okay, first year in office for Donald Trump. The Huffington Post reports that Eric Bowling, Fox News host, Sexual, the, the Huffington Post reports that Eric Bowling sexually harassed these women. They made the report in August. Fox lawyers started an investigation within a month. Within a month, Eric Bowling was fired. It took like four weeks to fire Eric Bowling. Let me read this to you. Eric Bowling, a Fox News host, 
who threatened to sue a reporter who wrote about allegations he'd sent an explicit picture to some of his female colleagues has parted ways with the network. Fox News is also canceling Bowling's show, The Fox News Specialists, though his former co-hosts will still contribute to the network. Quote, Fox News Channel is canceling the specialists and Eric Bowling, and Fox have agreed to part ways amicably, the network said in a statement Friday. We thank Eric for his 10 years of service to our loyal viewers and wish him the best of luck. Okay, so they fired him. The lawyers spent a couple weeks, investigated the sexual harassment claims, and they said, get rid of them. Okay, the minute the Huffington Post, the minute the Huffington Post reported that women are stepping forward, uh, Eric Bowling immediately sued the reporter for $50 million, right? So I want to show you the, the complaint because uh, I started reading the complaint that was filed uh, on August 9th, 2017. This is kind of interesting. So this is the lawsuit Eric Bowling filed against the reporter for the Huffington Post. He was accused of sexual harassment on August 6th of 2017. Uh that's August 6th. By September 8th, that's about a month later, Fox News fires him. Gone. But look what went on within that 30-day period where Fox News investigated the claims and Bowling fired, filed a $50 million lawsuit against the reporter for the Huffington Post who broke that story. August 9th, 2017. You see that? About... What, three days after the story comes out, uh, he files a $50 million defamation lawsuit against the reporter. I was looking at the lawsuit this morning, August 9th, 2017. And uh, now remember, he worked for Fox News. He now works for Newsmax. And on both those networks, there's a constant refrain about the cancel culture. And more importantly, the First Amendment. Everything Donald Trump did in the lead up to January 6th and on January 6th, they all say, his apologists all say, his lawyers all say, Eric Bowling says it's protected by the First Amendment. The fascist right insists they are all about the First Amendment. So why would Eric Bowling sue a reporter for $50 million immediately after, immediately after, that story came out. I mean, Bowling is a journalist. He spent 10 years working at Fox News. You notice the date of the lawsuit, right? And, you know, Bowling was suspended from Fox News in order for the lawyers to investigate to see whether or not these allegations had any merit. But immediately, immediately before Fox lawyers could come back, he filed a $50 million Defamation suit against that reporter. A typical fascist Republican, Bowling decided to use our legal system as a cudgel and sue a lowly reporter for the Huffington Post for what, $50 million? As though the reporter has $50 million, as though he can afford the attorney fees, which I assume were provided by the Huffington Post, I assume. And, you know, so I was thinking about this lawsuit back in 2017, that it was filed. Uh, you know, the legal profession is very, very corrupt. But what kind of lawyer would rush a lawsuit, a $50 million defamation lawsuit against a reporter within days of the story breaking and before the lawyers come back to investigate uh, you know, if bowling is cleared by the Fox lawyers, then you sue. Why the rush to sue? So I looked to see who bowling's lawyer was. It's kind of interesting. It's uh, the law firm of Kazowitz Benson Torres, LLP. Kazowitz, Kazowitz. 
the law firm of Kazowitz, Benson and Torres. Torre. How do I know the name Kazowitz? It, it's so it's it, it, why do I know that? And then I remembered the New York Times profiled Mark Kazowitz, the senior partner uh, in that law firm back in 2017, early on in Donald Trump's presidency. The, the article in The New York Times was entitled Trump's lawyer, Mark Kazowitz, the toughest of the tough guys. He's tough, you know, like Michael Cohen, who now wants to be a, a congressman. Michael Cohen, the convicted felon, Michael Cohen uh, is going to run for Congress because he was tough. And in the article in the New York Times, Mark Kazowitz, a pit bull of a lawyer, said he likes a good fight. He says the nastier, the better. That's a that's Trump's uh, lawyer, Mark Kazowitz. The nastier, the better. When Fox News fired Bill O'Reilly for sexual harassment, perhaps assault, Mark Kazowitz was his lawyer. In 2016, after the New York Times reported on two women who stepped forward, claiming they were the victims of an unwanted sexual advance by then candidate Donald Trump, it was his lawyer, Mark Kazowitz, who fired off a letter threatening to sue the New York Times. And no doubt, I don't have proof of this, uh, the two women, right? Uh, there's no question that he, we know their M.O., he would have threatened the women, right? So within weeks of Mark uh, of Trump becoming president, uh, Mark Kazowitz became Trump's attorney assigned to handle the Russiagate investigation. This was 2017. Preet Bharara, the United States attorney for the Southern District of New York, early, early in Trump's presidency, began looking into Trump's business dealings. It's New York City, right? And he started looking into Trump's alleged money laundering through Deutsche Bank. And Kazowitz, according to ProPublica, he warned Trump that Preet Bharara was going to get him. He was going to get him. And then, miraculously, Trump fired Preet Bharara, United States attorney, in March of 2017, Trump took office in late January of 2017. By the middle of March, Preet Braha, attorney for the Southern District of New York, was gone. And ProPublica reported that Mark Kazowitz bragged that he was personally responsible for the firing because he likes a nasty fight. Uh, he likes a nasty fight. He's Trump's lawyer. Uh, if you can't win on the merits of the case, get the prosecutor fired. Get me my Roy Cohen. Get me my Michael Cohen. Get me my Mark Kazowitz. This is about hardball, not the merits of the case. Use the legal system as a cudgel if Eric Bowling is accused of sexual harassment in the Huffington Post immediately before Fox News lawyer, before the lawyers investigate, sue the reporter for $50 million. In May of 2017, the Los Angeles Times reported that Mark Kazowitz was also Donald Trump's divorce attorney back in the, the 90s. He was the one who suppressed the deposition where People say, this is what we've heard, that Ivana Trump agreed to take back the marital rape allegations. This is Mark Kazowitz, Donald Trump's pit bull. His personal attorney handles the divorces. He handles Trump's bankruptcies. And the Los Angeles Times reports that Kazowitz charges $1,500 an hour. Mm, I don't think... He's charging Trump anything, or if he is, Trump ain't paying it. But Mark Kazowitz, in late August of 2017, filed that $50 million lawsuit, or his law firm did, on behalf of Eric Bowling, who 
it turns out, was guilty, right? It turns out, or at least guilty enough to get fired by Fox News uh, within a month. He, they sever ties with him. Kazowitz couldn't wait to see what Fox News lawyers found because he says, according to his website, that he's an uber litigator who is, quote, the toughest of the tough guys. It's all about being tough. He's tough. So Eric Bowling went to him and said, what do we do? And he goes, we're, this, we're gonna break that reporter and sue him for $50 million before we even find out whether or not you're innocent. D you know, doesn't bother to ask Eric Bowling, did you send the dick pics? I'm tough, I'm a pit bull, watch me work. So yeah, Mark Kazowitz, very tough guy, you know, except when it comes to alcohol. Uh, by July of 2017, Kazowitz was no longer Trump's attorney, able to defend him for the Russiagate accusations because he couldn't get security clearance. On Russiagate, you know, you're, you're going to be the president's attorney. You're going to be shown files, top secret files for Donald Trump's defense. You need to get clearance from the FBI, which Jared Kushner never got. He So uh, Mark Kazowitz couldn't gain access to government documents in order to represent Donald Trump in the, in the Russiagate investigation. So by the end of July of 2017, he could no longer be Donald Trump's lawyer. In July of 2017, ProPublica reported that Mr. Tough Guy, you know, the nastier the better, the uber litigator Mark Kazowitz, you know, I love a good fight. Well, it turns out he's been struggling with alcohol for a good portion of his adult life. So much so, it's knocked him on his ass a couple of times. ProPublica spoke with more than 24 current or former associates of Kazowitz's law firm, who say his drinking got so bad, Kazowitz had to go into rehab in the winter of 2014 and came out sometime in 2015. That's a long rehab stay. But ProPublica reported in 2017 that Mr. Tough Guy came out of rehab and started drinking again. And, you know, 2017, he's still drinking. Alcoholics can't get security clearance, so he couldn't serve as Trump's personal attorneys. Multiple attorneys who worked with Kazowitz told ProPublica that Kazowitz, Mark Kazowitz, Mr. Tough Guy, would often drink on the job. Mind you of anybody? The alcoholic Rudy Giuliani, perhaps? You see a pattern here? See who Trump surrounds himself with? Okay. ProPublica reports Kazowitz showed up drunk to work unable to stand up at some of the law firm's holiday parties. He was dirty dancing with women other than his wife at parties. And he once showed up to work with two black eyes looking like a raccoon, they said. That was after a night of drinking with another woman who was not his wife. And he didn't want to say what happened, but he had two black eyes. Uh, so that's Mark Kazowitz, the self-described pit bull of the legal profession, who, according to ProPublica, fights for his clients, not in the courtroom, but with his metaphorical knuckles. And that's who Eric Bowling hired to file a $50 million lawsuit against a reporter for getting the story about Eric Bowling's sexual harassment absolutely right. But this is what these fascists do. They insist they're all about freedom of speech unless that speech is directed at them. And then they use all the money at their disposal to bring in lawyers, crackpot lawyers like Mark Kazowitz, to silence the press. As I've been saying since last Tuesday's indictment was handed down, five, if not six, of Trump's co-conspirators our lawyers. This is an indictment of the legal profession. Eric Bowling 
fired from Fox News, found his way to Newsmax. And Newsmax is being sued by Dominion and Smartomatic, the two voting machine companies for defamation uh, and uh, for allowing people like Rudy Giuliani to spread lies on Newsmax about those machines. Somebody, Newsmax, uh, 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 Smartomatic and Dominion should start suing Donald Trump for defamation because he's just as guilty as Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell, who cost uh, Fox News, what, $700 million? They had to settle with Dominion for $700 million for allowing Rudy and Sidney Powell on their network. And now Smartomatic, Smartmatic is suing Fox for $2.5 billion for allowing Rudy and Sidney Powell on their network. And they're also suing Newsmax for allowing Rudy and Sidney Powell on their network to spread the same exact lies that Donald Trump is spreading about these voting machines. Somebody should sue. Somebody from Smartmatic and Dominion should sue Trump. So Eric Bolling found his way to Newsmax. And here he is Wednesday night assisting Donald Trump in the intimidation of Fonnie Willis, right? You can't win this case on the merits. You got to resort to lies and inciting violence. Pay attention to what's going on here. Think of who they're playing to. Okay, this is down in Georgia. What are your thoughts of her? Because there's some discussion that she may have some questionable background. You know, there's some her Father may or may not have been in Black Panther. I think that was discussed. Her father may or may not have been a Black Panther. I think that might have been discussed. I, I think Eric Bowling's father may have been a Nazi war criminal who exterminated uh, 500,000 gypsies. Uh, may or may not have been. A, that, that might have been discussed. Uh, I don't know if that's true, but I, I hear that Eric Bowling has molested. Uh, I'm not going to go there, uh, but you see how it works. And so we're told that uh, because Fonnie Willis's father may or may not have been a Black Panther, Trump must be innocent because Fonnie Willis's father may or may not have been a Black. But you know, by the way, the Black Panthers uh, I think Richard Pryor was a Black Panther. Uh, don't don't let the white hierarchy uh, market the Black Panthers. Read about the Black Panthers and all the good they did in Oakland. Uh, anyway, here is Eric Bowling doing Donald Trump's dirty work. She's had perhaps incorrect relationships with some of the people, some of the gang members that she's also prosecuting right now. <laughs> Look at the face. Look at Trump smiling. Wow, you read my talking points. He can't believe how great a job the servile Eric Bowling. We can't believe how loyal Eric, Boyle, Eric Bowling is parroting the lies that Trump is spreading about Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis in order to uh, get people uh, violent. Uh, she is constantly getting racially tinged death threats because, you know, Trump supporters, they love women, especially black women. She is getting uh, death threats. She's had to beef up secure her own personal security. A lot of her lawyers are working from their homes with intense security. Uh, so here is part of an ad that Trump is running in Fulton County, Georgia, right now uh, to contaminate the jury pool. OK, I think I have another clip. Let me place one more thing from Eric Bowling and Donald Trump before I play the ad. The lies that they're spreading to incite a mini January 6 in two weeks when Fawny Willis hands down her indictments. Did she give you a fair shake? No, of course not. Look, I don't think the people of Georgia, where I did very well, 
And I won it the first time, and I won it, I think, by much more the second time. I can say that about the whole election, too. I don't think they'd stand for it. They're not going to stand for it. See what's going on here? They're not going to. The people are not going to stand for it. OK, this is he's signaling to uh, his supporters in Georgia that, you know, you don't stand for this. Let me play you the ad. Uh, here's part of an ad that Trump is running in Fulton County, Georgia, right now in order to contaminate the jury pool, as well as incite a possible mini uh, riot insurrection uh, when the indictments come down. This is a political ad, but it attacks a prosecutor. It cost Trump 80 grand to buy airtime in the metro Atlanta area to run this. He's running it between August 9th and August 13th. And I'm sure he'll continue to run it uh, right up until the indictments and his people start rioting. Uh, hence, we see barricades in front of the courtroom. This is Trump trying to incite his imbeciles. And how can this be legal? How can you buy political ads using donations for your criminal defense? Right. We know that Trump's super PAC spent $40 million in the second quarter of this year on legal fees. Now, now, people who donate to Trump, their money, you know, they're OK with it going towards political ads. But the one the ad I'm going to play you right now, this has nothing to do with electing a candidate. It's about keeping him out of prison. How is the Federal Election Commission not pulling these ads? Uh, this ad is a call to arms. It's racially tinged. It shows I'm not going to show you the whole thing. It shows Letitia James, the state attorney general of New York, who is also suing Donald Trump uh, in a civil court. Uh, she's an African-American woman. And uh, then it also shows Alvin Bragg, the African-American uh, D.A. in Manhattan, who arrested Donald Trump for uh, campaign finance fraud, uh, you know, for the hush money payments to Stormy Daniels. So it's racially tinged in Georgia, of all places. This ad is a call to arms. It's telling people in a not so subtle way, you should show up outside the courtroom and make your voice heard after Donald Trump's indictments come down. Here it is. And Biden's newest lackey, Atlanta DA, Fonnie Willis. So incompetent, on her watch, violent crimes have exploded. So tainted, Willis was thrown off one case for trying to prosecute a political opponent. So corrupt, Willis got caught hiding a relationship with a gang member she was prosecuting. So dishonest, Willis was accused of creating a fake subpoena. Welcome to the Fraud Squad. Uh, this is priming the pump for rioting in Fulton County or Atlanta after Donald Trump is indicted. Now, these are all lies. Every single one of those statements in that ad are lies. And that's why political advertising on radio and television should be against the law, because you're free to lie as long as they as long as it's a political ad, you are free to to lie. Uh, you can't lie if you're selling soap. You can't say this soap cures eczema. But if you're selling a candidate, you can call him. You can you can say Donald Trump is a Nobel laureate, Nobel laureate, and you don't have to. It's almost impossible to to stop those ads from running. It is lies, all lies. And the, the lies in this ad were debunked yesterday in a great piece that you should read over at the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Donald Trump is lying, is defaming 
Fawny Willis. Go subscribe to the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. They got great coverage uh, of these indictments that are they're going to be coming down. So here is one part of the ad that we clipped. It's and it was it's debunked. I'm going to show you why it's uh, it's an example of the lies in the ad. The big lie that Donald Trump is telling he, he in his speeches, he says there was an improper relationship with a gang member that that funny Willis had an improper relationship with a gang member while she was prosecuting him. This is just a lie. And he keeps repeating the big lie. Trump won't stop saying this. Eric Bowen mentioned it in his questions. Uh, So listen again to this part of the ad. Pay attention how they source the lie. They claim it's sourced by Rolling Stone magazine. Okay. Willis got caught hiding a relationship with a gang member she was prosecuting. Okay, that is a lie. Willis was caught. I'm going to play it again. This is a lie. But see, it says source Rolling Stone, January 25th, 2023. It is a lie. This is a lie. Okay, let me play it again. Willis got caught hiding a relationship with a gang member she was prosecuting. Willis got caught hiding a relationship. She was having a relationship with she was hiding a relationship with a gang member uh, that she was prosecuting. This is a lie. It is a lie. Uh, Go read the piece in the Atlanta Journal Constitution. According to the article, Trump is referring to a rapper who was also a gang member And before becoming a district attorney, Fawny Willis was a defense attorney. This was back in 2019. And she defended him in a criminal trial. She wasn't prosecuting him. She wasn't working as a prosecutor. She was defending him. So that's the first thing they get wrong. Rolling Stone interviewed this rapper who may or may not be a gang member. They interviewed him for an article they were doing about Fawny Willis that was used as a source for this lie in this ad. And the rapper said as his defense attorney, Fawny Willis served as a kind of like an aunt or a mother to him. Uh, He said in the article, uh, Uh, He and Willis developed what he described as an auntie to nephew, mother to son sort of relationship. They had a relationship, an auntie to nephew, mother to son sort of relationship. Okay, and Donald Trump takes that article and says they had a relationship, an improper relationship while she was prosecuting him. No, she was defending him. Okay, you know, I don't know where uh, Donald Trump gets uh, auntie to nephew or mother to son sort of relationship. I don't know how that's uh, improper. But, you know, given the incestuous feelings Donald has openly expressed for Ivanka, he must have figured a mother to son relationship involves sex. By the way, there's new reporting I don't have time to go into this. There's new reporting that uh, part of the sexual harassment in the Oval Office was Donald Trump commenting on uh, Ivanka's anatomy to women, like how sexy my daughter is, like how, how he lusted after his daughter. Very healthy, very healthy man. Uh, So there was no improper relationship, but this is the lie you're going to hear. Uh, I go read the Rolling Stone article and read the Atlanta uh, Constitution. What's the I want to make sure I say the name of the Atlanta Journal Constitution. It's a great newspaper. Uh, You know, a rapper who's also maybe a gang member, gets into some trouble and he needs a defense attorney. It is perfectly natural for the attorney 
to serve as a surrogate aunt or mother in providing counsel. That's not an improper relationship, and it certainly wasn't sexual. It wasn't boyfriend and girlfriend. It's a damnable lie. Uh, Now, in the ad, they also talk about violent crime in Atlanta uh, being at record highs. Right? That's a lie. You wouldn't know that. If you watched Fox News, right, inflation is down, but all we keep hearing about is how bad inflation is. And if you listen to Trump or Fox News, violent crime uh, in Atlanta is at record highs. Look it up. Violent crime in Atlanta is at an historic low. Okay, it got you know around the time of covid It went up a little, it ticked up, but it is back to the secular historic low that's been going on for the past 40 years here in America. Violent crime is down. But we have an African-American woman who's a prosecutor. So the racists want to believe or, you know, they're very it's very easy to convince racists that black people commit crime and that a black woman prosecutor is going to hand out guns and bullets and knives to other black people and say, go commit crimes, go rob white people. That's what Trump is banking on. That's what Fox News banks on by lying about black crime in Atlanta. This is sick. This is sick. Uh, Donald Trump and the legal profession here in the United States have made lying, alternative reality, a perfectly reasonable defense politically and now for any crimes you commit or any hurt you inflict. And there are there are consequences for this. It's bullying behavior. And when you rely on legal pit bulls who are willing to twist the truth for $1,500 an hour, it, it degrades uh, our democracy and our planet. There are also consequences, not just for you and me and our planet. There are consequences for these Republicans. They pay a heavy, heavy price for forcing everyone around them to live in an alternative reality. They drive everyone around them crazy. The people who work for them, if they're, if they're, if there's a woman stupid enough to bear their kids, it drives the wives crazy, the girl, the girlfriends crazy, and the kids crazy. They pay a price for this. When you create these alternative realities, you end up with sons like Don Jr., Donald Trump Jr., who's strung out on God knows what kind of prescription pills these days. So they say people are telling me I've heard. I've heard that He snorts Adderall. This is what I've been told. This is what people are saying. I don't know if it's true or not, but this is what people are saying, that Donald Trump Jr. is addicted to pills and and uh, is a drug addict. That's what people are saying. This is what I've heard. I don't know if it's true. Uh, But this is what these are the consequences to these alternative realities. You have. Sons like Don Jr., who end up filled with so much rage for how his father treated his mother and himself that he ends up running off to kill defenseless animals in Africa or has sex with them here in America. That's his uh, fiance, Kimberly Gargoyle, attorney. She's an attorney. Uh, I think she worked in the the San Francisco DA's office. And does anybody honestly believe that this is a healthy relationship? Uh, Donald Trump Sr. told Don Jr., 
go ahead and have go go ahead have her. I I I could have had her. I don't want her. So you take her. She's in my estimation. I can do better. But you take her. That's what has been in. That's been reported. Uh, don't you think that's true? Don't you think that's true? Uh, this is attorney Kellyanne Conway, attorney. She was Trump's campaign manager, and then she was a White House spokesperson when he got elected. And the first week of his presidency, I don't know if you remember this, White House press spokesman Sean Spicer was forced to uh, lie about the crowd size for Trump's inauguration. Trump was pissed. Nobody, well, some people showed up, mostly women, to protest, but he was furious that he had a, f a smaller crowd than Obama's inaugurations. And so he said, go out there and tell everybody that it's the largest inauguration in American history. And Sean Spicer, who should rot in hell, went out there and said this was, you know, the, the, the media showing these pictures, showing how sparse the crowd was. And Sean Spicer kicked off Trump's presidency with a lie. He said, this was the largest inauguration in American history, period. Remember that? Period. Despite photographs, provable photographs that the National Park Service put out. It was one of the smallest crowds for a, an inauguration, period. But this is what fascists do. And he knew from the beginning, Donald Trump, he knew you lie. It's part of the fascist playbook, right? You, you make people doubt reality. You create an alternative universe. I'm the authoritarian. I'll tell you what is true. Believe, don't trust the media. Trust me, I'll tell you what the truth is. You're going to believe this photograph? You're going to believe your own eyes or what I'm telling you? Uh, I'm going to play Kellyanne Conway on Meet the Press. She's a lawyer. And you remember Kellyanne Conway, right? She famously talked about alternative facts. Very uh, damaged woman. I think the dad left. I think the dad uh, grew up without a father, I think. Uh, I know if she were my kid, uh, she'd be growing up without a father. <laughs> Telling you right now, if Kellyanne Conway, three months in, I'm out of there uh, with that Meeskite. So uh, this Meeskite, Kellyanne Conway, talked about alternative facts the very first week of Donald Trump's president. Now, we always think of this Meeskite, Kellyanne Conway, talking about alternative facts. But we don't, we forget. I forgot until I was preparing my notes for the show that this was right out of the gate, she said, alternative facts. They knew what they were doing. So one of the benefits of a podcast is you can let things breathe. Uh, so I'm talking about the real world consequences of spreading lies and calling them alternative facts. Lies about Fawny Willis, which Donald Trump is spreading lies because it's to intimidate her, not to indict. She is telling her employees, be careful. It's not safe. They're putting up barricades. He's going on Newsmax with Eric Bowling and talking about how his people aren't going to stand for an indictment down in Georgia. They're usually using racially tinged lies about Fawny Willis to animate the racists in Georgia. I don't know if you know this, but Georgia has some racists. Maybe you didn't. Maybe uh, nobody ever told you about that. Uh, the, when, when he's up in New Hampshire, he is saying, you know, if if you indict me, Dan and George is going to tear that city apart. Mm hmm. OK, real world consequences for the country and the planet when you 
lie this way, but there are also consequences for your children if you, or girlfriends or boyfriends or husbands. Uh, watch this clip, please, in the context of what we now know about Kellyanne's tragic personal life. I'm not talking about her father going, hey, I'm not raising this meese kite. I'm out of here. I'm talking about the divorce and the troubled daughter. And I'll be careful here, I promise you. Okay. Uh, her daughter's now an adult. Okay. Uh, and uh, I want to be respectful here. She's 18. Uh, I see her as a victim of uh, Kellyanne Conway and George. Uh, I want to be careful here. She's 18 years old, though. And, you know, uh, she was part of the resistance. She she spoke out against Donald Trump and she paid a price for it. Uh, she's now working as a Playboy bunny. Uh, she's posing scantily clad on the Internet. OK, uh, I understand that maybe some of those videos have been taken down and I, I she's on our side, the daughter. She's on our side. Uh, and let's if you pray, pray for the daughter. She's on our side. What chance did she have having this meese kite for a mother? On January 20th, I found this curious, did a little research today. On January 20th, 2021, now I believe that would be the day Joe Biden was inaugurated. Is it the 20th or the 21st? I think it's the 20th. Kellyanne's daughter called the police for the first time, saying she was abused by her mother. Kellyanne's daughter, on either Inauguration Day or Inauguration Eve, finally called the police and said she's abused by her mother. And the police came out and did a welfare check. The night before she called the police. That's interesting, Donald. She, The fact that it was like, I looked at the date and I went, oh, that makes sense. Donald Trump is no longer president. She was scared. Uh, the night before the police came out, Kellyanne's daughter posted a series of TikTok videos in which Kellyanne Conway was berating her daughter. I saw those and I, you know, uh, I don't know how bad they were. Uh, I, I, they've been taken down. They were bad. But if you've ever had kids, if you've ever had kids, there's a playfulness that goes on. So I don't know. I, I was kind of on the fence uh, about how horrible those TikTok videos were. Now, there was, all, there was also reporting that uh, Kellyanne hit her, smacked her, while uh, she was filming her TikTok video. I'd be in the comments section. Let me know what you remember. I kind of remember it because I, you know, I hate the Conways. And my heart, you know, I pray for the daughter. I hope she finds her way. She's brave. I mean, having that mother and, you know, being part of the resistance while Trump was president. Uh, she deserves all our prayers. I do. I don't remember the hitting. I remember thinking, well, if this is what Kellyanne Conway does when she knows she's on camera, what does she do in private? So the videos have since been deleted, but obviously something ain't right having Kellyanne Conway for a mother. Uh, the police investigated and no charges were filed uh, because Kellyanne Conway is white. She's a lawyer. She's married to a lawyer. Big name lawyers. So... You know, the police are they're not going to they're going to do a welfare check. They're going to go through the motions. Uh, 
Now, you have the daughter of two lawyers uh, raised with the wrong values, uh, you know, and, the, you know, they were pushing, co- you know, they were pushing private schools and college on her. And she's now an adult and uh, she's posing naked on the Internet. Um, I don't think she's going to college. I hope she does. Uh, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with posing naked on the Internet. Uh, I wouldn't wish that for my daughter. And I know devout Christian Kellyanne Conway, who wears that cross around her neck. uh, I know she isn't too happy about the daughter posing naked on the Internet. And I would suspect one of the reasons the daughter is doing that uh, is because she's got a miskite for a mother, Kellyanne Conway, who is divorced from George Conway. He couldn't stand it anymore. Uh, he's no great shakes, you know, uh, these never Trumpers. Uh, so I'm going to play you the alternative facts clip from 2017. I, I looked for it today and it blew me away. I couldn't believe it was the first week of Donald Trump's presidency. Think of the real world consequences to a lawyer like Kellyanne Conway creating an alternative universe. Think of what this does to our our politics, our democracy, our nation, the planet. Uh, And think of what it does to a miskite like Kellyanne Conway. The, the, The personal consequences for her. I don't really care what happens to Kellyanne, but I care about her daughter uh, because this kind of abuse of language, abuse of reason doesn't end at work. It uh, it's mold. It finds its way into the home. It bleeds. It bleeds into every aspect of this Miskite's life, uh, especially with the children and the husband. So watch this through that prism of of what picture yourself being married to this miskite, having this miskite for a mom. Picture yourself trying to reason with this horrible, horribly deformed human being, this mental deformity, Kellyanne Conway, the first week of Donald Trump's presidency, I present to you the deformity that is the miskite, Kellyanne Conway. Then explain you did not answer the question. Why did the president send out his press secretary, who's not just the spokesperson for Donald Trump, he could be the, he is also serves as the spokesperson for all of America at times. He speaks for all of the country at times. Why put him out there the, for the very first time in front of that podium to utter a provable falsehood. It's a small thing, but the first time he confronts the public, it's a falsehood? Chuck, I mean, if we're gonna keep referring to our press secretary in those types of terms, I think that we're gonna have to rethink our relationship here. I wanna have a great open relationship with our press, but look what happened the day before, talking about falsehoods. We allowed the press spray to come, the press to come into the Oval Office I witnessed President Trump signing executive orders. And uh, of course, you know, the Senate had just confirmed General Mattis and General Kelly to their two posts. And we allow the press in. And what happens almost immediately? A falsehood is told about removing the bust of Martin Luther King Jr. from right. the Oval Office. That, no, that's just flat out false. And the and pool writer. And it was writer, corrected but immediately. Why, Chuck, but, why but was it I, said? No, Chuck, I mean, why was it said in the first place? Because everybody is so presumptively climb, negative. Climb into the head of that no, reporter. that it's okay. No, but excuse Ms. me. Oh, no, 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 no. That reporter was writing. To the, uh, on behalf of the press pool, that that I falsehood that. got spread three thousand times but it does before not it was excuse, corrected. Excuse and me, it's it still does out not there. excuse. And you did not answer the question. I did you, answer no, your question. No, you did not. You did yes, not answer did. the question of why the president asked the White House press secretary to come out in front of the podium for the first time and utter a falsehood. Why did he do that? It undermines the credibility of the entire 
White House press office no, it on doesn't. day don't one. Be so, don't be so overly dramatic about it, Chuck. What it, it, you're saying it's a falsehood, and they're giving Sean Spicer, our press secretary, gave alternative facts to that. But the point remains Wait a minute. Alternative that there's... Facts? Alternative facts, four of the five facts he uttered. The hey, one Chuck, thing he why, got hey, right Chuck. was Zeke Miller. Four of the five facts he uttered were just not true. Look, alternative facts are not facts. They're falsehoods. Chuck, do you think it's a fact or not that millions of people have lost their, their plans or health insurance and their doctors under President Obama? Do you think it's a fact that everything we heard from these women yesterday happened on the watch of Barack Obama? He now, we've all been in relationships with people like this, right? I asked you to watch this through the prism of being married to that or having that for a mother. So, you know, I talk about ancestral guilt and blaming the kids. Uh, I pray for Kellyanne's daughter. She's a hero. Uh, and if you're religious, you should pray for Kellyanne's daughter because she joined the resistance during Trump's presidency. That took real courage. I'm not going to show I'm not going to tell you her name. I'm not going to show a picture. She's an adult now. Uh, I want to res show respect for her. But if you pray, f if you pray for people, pray for Kellyanne Conway's daughter to find her way through this world. Uh, she's a lot like Patty Davis Reagan, who uh, also posed naked in Playboy uh, to get even uh, with uh, her her parents and the policies of Reaganomics. And by the way, Patty Davis Reagan uh, is an amazing writer. You should Google Raul Reagan's uh, daughter, Patty Davis, One of, just a brilliant writer uh, and a hero. And so was Ron Jr. The two kids that uh, Ronald Reagan had with uh, Nancy are American heroes. The adopted kid he had with Jane Wyman, Michael Reagan, he's, you know, as bad as Kellyanne Conway. But this is, can you imagine having that Kellyanne Conway for a mother? Uh, is it any, is it any wonder on the day Joe Biden was inaugurated? I think... I was going over the police reports. It looks like to me that the daughter finally felt it was safe enough to call the cops on her mom. There are real world consequences for these lies that lawyers spread for Trump. Consequences for you and me and the people in their lives. This is Rob Porter, Harvard undergrad and Harvard Law. He's a lawyer. That's him working in the Trump Oval Office as White House staff secretary. Now, I mentioned him yesterday when I listed all the violent men with a history of domestic abuse who somehow found their way into Trump's White House. I talked about Robert Reich. He's Clinton's labor secretary. And uh, he wrote a piece on the characteristics of fascism. And this is something most of you already know, but it's worth reminding you that one of the core tenets of fascism is the subjugation of women, violence towards women. And we see a lot of that in the Trump White House because Trump is a fascist and a rapist. Judge Kaplan, once again, the guy who presided over Eugene Carroll's defamation suit once again said, you are a rapist. Uh, and he, therefore, is perfectly comfortable around violent men, uh, especially men who are violent towards women. You know, there are several types of violent men, uh, but, but Trump seems to like the ones who are violent towards women because he's violent towards women. How could he, I mean, how could he not be? I mean, he's just a violent man, emotionally violent. He's too flabby and out of shape to be physically violent, unless it's with somebody who's physically weaker than he. A woman. 
And uh, that's why he is a rapist. You know, E. Jean Carroll is going to get five million dollars uh, from him. A, a, a jury ruled that he is a rapist. Read Judge Kaplan twice in the past month. He said Donald Trump is a rapist, the presiding judge in the E. Jean Carroll case. So uh, thank you for your comments. I do read them. Uh, some of them are funny and some of them are very informative and they're getting really more interesting. Uh, one of my listeners wrote to me and said, I only scratched the surface with Harvard Law School's Rob Porter, who you see there with Donald Trump uh, serving as Trump's uh, White House staff secretary. I think they're reading a bondage menu together. Uh so I talked about Hope Hicks, who worked very closely for Donald Trump in the White House, and she dated Rob Porter. She also dated Corey Lewandowski, who I talked about yesterday, who also has a storied history of violence, not rape, but sexual aggression, touching women, smacking them creating bruises. Uh, she dated Rob Porter and Corey Lewandowski while she was in the White House. And I also talked about Stephanie Grisham, who uh, dated uh, Max Miller, who worked in the Trump White House. And in her book, she accused Max Miller of physically assaulting her and the Trump White House wasn't interested in doing anything about it. And now Max Miller is a congresswoman, congresswoman, congressman uh, from Ohio who just got elected. Storied history of drunk driving and violence and uh, Donald Trump campaigned for him. This is what fascists do. They subjugate, they hit and rape women. That is part of being a fascist. OK, uh, so uh, on yesterday's show, I talked about how one of Rob Porter's ex-wives warned Hope Hicks that Harvard Law School graduate Rob Porter would probably physically assault her the same way he assaulted her. And one of the comments I appreciate said, hey, you should look into this. It's, it's a lot. I'm laughing because it's so horrific. It's a lot worse. It's a lot worse. Uh, the FBI looked into reports of restraining orders uh, and black eyes and physical and emotional abuse reported by Rob Porter uh, Harvard graduate, Harvard undergrad, I believe, in Harvard Law School, uh, reported by his two ex-wives, young guy, two ex-wives. Uh, you know, the FBI has to look into uh, if you're going to work in the Oval Office, you need a security clearance, uh, especially if, as you can see here, going over a bondage menu with the president. These are top secret and classified. They got to make sure that you're you're not compromised. So you need security clearance. Right. I talked about Trump's lawyer, the pit bull, Mark Kazowitz earlier. He couldn't get security clearance. So he had a could no longer be Trump's lawyer on Russiagate. He had a little problem with drinking and showing up to the office with two black eyes. Uh, so the New York Times reported back in 2018 that despite these reports from the ex-wives being verified by the FBI during their uh, security clearance check, Donald Trump kept Rob Porter on at the White House anyway, because Trump is a fascist and fascists beat rape and subjugate women. And so Trump only thought more of, not less of, more of Rob Porter for the way he treated women. Because we know that Trump is a rapist. Judge Kaplan, who presided over the E. Jean Carroll 
defamation suit, said so again this week. This is Orrin Hatch. He was the Republican senator from Utah. I think it was Utah, right? Where's Romney from? Utah. Yeah. Yeah, Utah. He died last year. Uh, Rob Porter's first job in government was in Senator Hatch's office. And when reports of domestic abuse surfaced, when these stories came out about the ex-wives with the black eyes, Senator Hatch immediately came to Harvard Law School graduate Rob Porter's defense because Rob Porter's wife's black eyes, if true, would be a black eye for Orrin Hatch. Doesn't make him look good. So Senator Hatch told reporters that Harvard Law School graduate Rob Porter was, quote, kind and considerate towards all. And then Senator Hatch dismissed the allegations as nothing more than rumors spread by political character assassins. But then Hatch saw the photos. He saw one of Porter's wives with the black eyes. The Washington Post suggests that he saw the FBI report that verified all those allegations. And so before he died, Senator Hatch wrote letters of apologies to Harvard Law School graduate Rob Porter's two ex-wives, Jenny Willoughby and Colby Holderness. Those are the ex-wives of former White House secretary, staff secretary Rob Porter. In 2018, they received letters of apology from Senator Orrin Hatch for not believing them. Different Republican Orrin Hatch. Not a fan. He's he's passed away. But uh, it was a different. uh, There were different Republicans back in 2018. It's amazing how quickly things change. Uh, This is not a party anymore. It is a cult. Donald Trump is the leader. Look at the polling in the Republican Party. Okay, this is not about policy anymore. It's about Trump. And this is exactly how fascism works. The leader inhabits the needs of the people. Right. And, and he plays on that. I could play you the clips. They're indicting me for you. I, you know, I and only I can save this country. I am your leader. I mean, it's I mean, he he's reading the authoritarian playbook. They're, you know, they're, they're not indicting me. They're indicting you. This is a cult. This is, you know, Jesus dies for your sins. Donald Trump is indicted for your crimes. Uh, you know, there was no Republican Party platform in 2020. Go read it. Every four years, they, they discuss policy. They fight it out. The Republican Party platform, go read it for 2020. The platform was Donald Trump. It is a cult now, a violent cult. There's no longer policy. It's just Trump. The same way it was just Hitler, just Franco, just Mussolini, just Putin, just Bolsonaro. Whatever they want is our platform. This is fascism. It's thuggish henchmen punching, kicking, and satisfying their, their sadistic bloodlust and the supporters of Donald Trump's uh, bloodlust. They live vicariously through the men who can get away with beating their ex-wives because the Republican Party now is a cult. It's about hurting people. That's all it is. Hurting the LGBTQ community. Seeing those migrants in cages. This is about sadism. This is my penis doesn't work. Somebody has to pay a price for this. These are sexually dysfunctional rapists. This is uh, this is who the Republican Party is. It has real world consequences for our country. 
as well as the insignificant others of these people doing the kicking and the screaming. Earlier, I talked about Trump's attorney, Mark Kazowitz, and what his life is like, right? This is the pit bull. This is the guy who likes a nasty fight. Well, there's the drinking, the dirty dancing with women other than his wife, the black eyes after a night of debauchery. Uh, like Rob Porter, Hope Hicks boyfriend, right? He couldn't get security clearance from the FBI to work in the White House. Alcoholic, rehab. ProPublica says he comes out of rehab. He's still drinking. He's looking for a fight. Anger issues, right? What does this do to Mark Kazowitz's wife? Does he have children? It can't be pleasant. Can't be healthy. It's not healthy for the country. It's not healthy for the people around these animals. They're animals. They're monsters. They know they are. We talked about Eric Bowling, who uh, Trump was going to name Commerce Secretary. We saw how he was fired from Fox News uh, for sexual harassment. He hired that pit bull, Mark Kazowitz, to sue the reporter who broke the sexual harassment story. They sued him for $50 million. We see rich and powerful right-wing fascist thugs hiring pit bull lawyers to change the truth. And there are consequences for this for our country and the people who share these monsters' lives or get, or get in their crosshairs, like Fonnie Willis, the uh, district attorney in Fulton County, who you're going to be reading a lot about. Uh, here is, I just want to show you this once again. Uh, after all that Eric Bowling went through, getting fired. Uh, uh, here he is once again helping Donald Trump spread lies about Fawny Willis, lies uh, to intimidate her and to stoke violence. Well, are you going to, are you going to, what are we doing here? Uh, let's see if I can do this. Okay. Uh, lies about her having an inappropriate relationship with a gang member. Lies about Atlanta's violent crime problem doesn't exist. Or it's the violent crime in Atlanta is at a record low. The racially tinged innuendo about Fawny Willis's father being a Black Panther all designed to rile up the racists of Georgia so they will storm the courthouse after the indictments are announced. We see that the truth doesn't matter, just muscle, power, and wealth. Be careful here. Let's be careful. Eric Bowling had a son. 19 years old, died on the very same day that Eric Bowling was fired from Fox News for sexual harassment. I wouldn't wish this on anyone. Seriously. Uh, I wouldn't wish uh, losing a child on anyone. I also wouldn't wish having Eric Bowling for a father on anyone. I wouldn't wish having Kellyanne Conway as a mother on anyone. What chance did Eric Bowling's 19-year-old son have with Eric Bowling as a father? There was money. There was power. There was influence. Eric Bowling spent the last month of his son's life fighting with the world. The last month of his son's life was spent 
suing a reporter for $15 million for telling the truth, a truth that would end up a month later getting Eric Bowling fired from Fox News. Uh, on the very same day, his son died from a drug overdose. The, the same day that Eric Bowling got fired from Fox News after those sexual harassment lawsuits proved to be true, his son died from a drug overdose. You cannot separate the damage these people do to our nation from the damage they do to themselves, their wives, girlfriends, and children. Now, a good man, a decent man, after losing his only son to drugs, would be haunted. And I'm sure he is haunted. Uh, he'd be thinking, you know, I should have been there for him. He was 19. You know, instead of fighting these sexual harassment allegations, which were true, which I knew were true, I wasted precious hours that I could have spent helping my 19-year-old son. I wasted precious hours lying to the world about sending dick pics to women who worked with me at Fox News. I could have helped my son. Now, that's what a normal father thinks. And I, you know, I wouldn't want to get inside Eric Bowling's head. I'm sure he does think that. But you need to change when something like that happens. But these are Trump's far right fascist henchmen. And. Uh, He'll serve Donald Trump's uh, wishes. He will. It's more important to serve Donald Trump, his master, spreading lies about Fawny Willis. Uh, it's more important to uh, suck up, get this smile from Donald Trump spread lies about Fawny Willis get the approval from Mein Fuhrer so that the uh, racists in Georgia will storm the barricades the day he's indicted that's the plan that's what Eric Bowling after all he's been through is there to help Donald Trump on his show on Newsmax Stir up violence. Stop another government proceeding like they did on January 6. In the end, Trump can only surround himself with emotionally flawed attorneys. Uh, attorneys who know what Eric Bowling knows, that Trump can't win any of these cases the same way. He can't win any of those voter fraud cases. He couldn't win any of those voter fraud cases in 2020. So when he's all out of options, all he's got left is violence. That's the default for all the people Donald Trump surrounds himself with violence. Eric Bowling. I wouldn't wish that tragedy on anybody, but it should have changed him, and it didn't. There he was on Newsmax Wednesday night helping Donald Trump try to stoke violence, racial violence, in Georgia when those indictments come down. These are bad people, and... Uh, at the very least, they should not be allowed to have children. And my advice, once again, if you're a woman, stay away from them. Stay away. If somebody tells you they're MAGA, stay away from them. 
there are consequences, real world consequences, as well as two black eyes. I'm David Feldman reminding you to stay strong and protect the weak.